Hello Church, my name's Winnie and I'm a member of Christ Central Church at uh, Penge Crystal Palace. <clears throat> um, for the last few weeks, um, I felt God put it on my heart about Psalm 150 and that um, I should look at it and share it. Psalm 150 is one of the last five Psalms in the book of Psalms and they call the people of Israel to praise, call them to remember all the great things that God has done. And it's much more of a command than a request. Um, I do have a bit of a history with Psalm 150, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But I just feel that we should read it for the moment. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I find that when I praise, my mood is lifted. Most mornings, God will wake me with a song, which I then can't get out of my head. Um, I'm kind of retired at the moment, but when I was working, I would often find myself humming it at my desk and my colleagues would say, what's that you're singing? Or some who are irritated might say, can you stop that singing, please? And I wouldn't even be aware I'm doing it, but you know, it helped me. I, I was a social worker and that used to help me quite a bit with coping with some of the dramas of the day. Um, so I would urge you that even in this time, you should praise God. Even if like me, your voice is yuck, because I believe that God hears the sound as a wonderful sound. It's coming from your heart. Man looks at the outward and listens to the outward, but God knows our heart. The history I have with Psalm 150 is that it was taught me when um, I was a rising nine. Um, I went to a Church of England school and the teacher at the time, I never forget his name, is Mr. Secret. He was a Christian and he taught us this psalm. He taught us 150. And the plan was that in the summer term, we would perform it as part of the school concert. And I think we went to Central Hall as well. And there were some of us playing cymbals and some of these instruments just to get the message across. Never forgotten it. Um, the year at the time had started very badly for me in terms of illness. And I now think, I now believe that God actually delivered me from those illnesses. And I, I did end up being able to be in the concert, although I'd been in hospital. But let's just uh, look at some of what it actually says in Psalm 150. It says, praise him in his sanctuary. That's his holy place. Um, you can read about that in Exodus, in the following books, Deuteronomy and so on, uh, and Numbers. Um, but now, back then, they couldn't go into the holy place. Now, because of Jesus' sacrifice, we can go into the holy place, and that's wonderful. But we don't just have to praise him in church. We can praise him anywhere because um, the other day I was reading about his imminence. God, though he's um, omnipotent and so great and so far above us, he can be with us. He is with us. So we can praise him at any time. Praise him in his mighty firmament. That's his mighty heavens. His, you know, praise him in, in all that creation. The whole of, ev of sky is evidence of his glory. Praise him for his mighty acts. Creation is his mighty act. Our church can talk of Ill illnesses that people have been cured from because God is so great and there's no work that's too hard for him. And I know this is a difficult time and like lots of other people, I've suffered the loss of a loved one through COVID, but still I will praise him. Um, he's our deliverer, he's our provider, he's got this. Praise him 
with every instrument. We, we just read that list of instruments. Nowadays, we have so many different instruments. And I believe that any one of them can be used to the praise and glory of God. And when I read that, I think that the praise is unreserved and at times loud and exuberant and happy. That's how we should praise him. And then it ends by saying, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everything must praise God. Elsewhere in the word, it talks of the heavens declaring the glory of God. Now a train is going by. Um, and the trees of the field clapping their hands and every knee bowing and confessing Jesus as Lord one day. I know this is a difficult time, but as Christians, we must still praise him. After all that he had gone through, Job said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, Naked I come, and naked I shall be returned. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a hard one, but he blessed God still. And at the end of the book of Job, we learn that Job was given far more than he'd ever lost. Habakkuk said in, in Habakkuk 3, 17 to 18, if everything fails, all the crops fail, the livestock fail, yet still he would praise God. The word also says that he's, uh, we get our joy and our strength from God. It also says not to worry in Matthew 6, verse 25. Don't worry. God is our provider. He's our healer. I find that when I praise, it reminds me of God's power. And much of the other devotionals through the past week have been speaking of that, of how much we should thank God for. So I would urge you to praise if you don't, if you can't come one morning or afternoon, just put the praise tapes on and let it minister to you. I hope what I've had to say has been helpful and useful. Um, thank you for listening. Bye, church.